Hello, fellow Creative Control listeners. My name is Mac Cameron. I live in Toronto, and I have been listening to Creative Control with Vish Khanna since episode 119 that featured all five members of one of my favorite bands, Constantine's. I listen backwards from there and then forwards, and I know it sounds, you know, over the top or cliche, but finding the show changed the course of my life. It inspired me to pursue a career in radio and to do what I can to support the arts in my community and across the country. So I give to Creative Control because I feel like I owe the show and Vish uh, for helping me figure out what the hell to do with my life. Beyond that, I give to Creative Control because I think independent media, especially insightful, entertaining, thoughtful, and thorough independent media is something that is worth paying for. What I appreciate about Creative Control is Vish's ability to treat Canadian artists, or any artist for that matter, with the seriousness and appreciation he would any other artist. His excellent rapport with people like Steve Albini and the members of Fugazi and Stephen Malcolmus and others have earned him international appreciation. However, it's his trove of interviews with what I consider to be the most exciting generation of Canadian musicians, conducted out of genuine passion and interest, that makes this show so special. I think it is an archive of some really exciting music that is way, way underreported on and appreciated. That's why I contribute to Creative Control with Vish Khanna, and I hope you will do the same. To make your flexible monthly donation to Creative Control, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. I'm Vish's wife, and I will love him no matter what you do. And now he has me on the record saying that. All the chips are in on this. Everything's on the line financially, emotionally. Tim Heidecker. And I think we have a very good chance of winning. I'm running for San Bernardino District Attorney. Oh, okay. I'm coming out here talking to voters. Oh, okay, for DA. Yes, for District Attorney. I've said that three times now. Greg Turkington and Eric Natarnicola are two of the creative forces behind the new motion picture, Mr. America. Both based in Los Angeles, Greg, Eric, and also their colleague Tim Heidecker work together on the Adult Swim series, on Cinema at the Cinema, which is ostensibly a film review panel show in the vein of Siskel and Ebert that has spawned several Oscar specials, a TV action series and hero and related movies, an EDM band, an ill-fated relationship between a man and a woman and their child, a phony doctor and self-help guru, a highly suspect popcorn-based movie review system, a fiasco of a music festival, many questionable products available for public consumption, a mistrial for murder, a book on Drag City Records, and a run for District Attorney of San Bernardino, California, among many other things. As On Cinema has just entered its 11th riveting season, the wild endeavor has also yielded us this aforementioned film, Mr. America, which is in theaters across North America on October 9th and will be accessible on digital platforms as well. In a recent chat, Greg and Eric told me all about Mr. America, what it means for on-cinema heads and the uninitiated, why Tim and Greg get along about as well as they do, future plans, and more. A part of the E1 Podcast Network with the support of listeners like you who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash Control. Plus, in-kind support from CFRU 93.3 FM, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. This is the 501st episode of Creative Control, featuring the very, very funny Greg Turkington and Eric Natarnicola, with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Hi, Greg. How are you? Never better, but I think I said that last time, too. Yes, it, 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 I feel like this may be the first time you've been on the show, this show, uh, within the same year, twice in the same year, I think. That's uh, remarkable. Thank you for your time. Uh, it's fine. I feel like I'm about to get blacklisted for pulling a stunt like that, but we'll see what happens. No, you will not. I'm in charge of the black or brown listing. In my case, it might be brown listing, just given my cultural background. But no, you're going to be fine. Fair enough. Yeah, you're going to be okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, and Eric, are you there? 
I am, yes. Thanks for having me. Nice to uh, meet you this way. We've never spoken as far as I can recall. That's, I believe that's correct. It's, it's nice to hear your voice. Now, where in the world are you today, Eric? I'm in Los Angeles. Excellent. And Greg, uh, just for, uh, you know, just to be clear, where are you? I'm in Los Angeles, but geographically, Los Angeles is, you know, one of the biggest cities in the world. So Eric and I are miles and miles and miles and miles away from each other. Okay. This isn't because you can't stand each other. Just This is just circumstances. After the we- long, long, like multi-year shoot that made up Mr. America, <laughs> we, we cannot stand each other. <laughs> yeah, we moved out. We used to live together, and now we live in separate houses. <laughs> 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 well, it's a thrill to speak with you. Uh, Eric, uh, uh, let me start with you. Congratulations on uh, this film, uh, Mr. America. Can you tell the people listening uh, about your role in this film? Thank you. Um, I was a, I co-wrote the film with Tim and Greg, and I directed it. Nice. And, and, and was that a fun experience? I, I mean, when Greg was last on the show, he kind of implied that this was a bit happenstance. It wasn't a plan to make a film. It just sort of worked out that way. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that is. We were initially tasked with creating some sort of 30 to 45 minute piece that would go on Adult Swim's website. And we were excited about doing this sort of mock documentary uh, format for Tim Running for DA. We didn't think it was going to be as long or as like fully fleshed out of a story. We thought it was just going to be more like a, a, a slight continuation in a different format of the On Cinema web series. Um, but after shooting it, our editor came back to us and said, you know, I have a two hour cut of this thing and, it, you know, I can get it down, but I can't get it down that much. Mm. We might have something more in the hour and a half range, which kind of surprised us. And, you know, after screening it to a few friends, because we still didn't quite believe that this could be a movie necessarily, you know, they were telling us like, you know, this is, this is it. This is like, uh, you should try to release this as a film. It feels complete. And, and so Eric, do you have a, you, you have a role in the on cinema universe generally, right? It wasn't just this film that you hopped on to, so to speak. That's right. I, I started as a director, uh, season three of on cinema, uh, seasons one and two were directed by Ben Berman. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I, I took over season three with the, I think the first Oscar special was the first thing I directed in on cinema. And uh, I've directed everything in that world since then. So this world that I've spoken with Greg about it before, and him actually, uh, in the context of this show and, and for other pieces, this world that you describe is multifaceted. Uh, multi, it's multifascinating. I, 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 I might as well, <laughs> I misspoke and it actually worked out. But it is multifaceted and it is multi-layered did you know eric what you were getting into when you signed on to be part of the on cinema universe and then create a tv show and then these oscar specials and there would be a band there would be a festival there would be a film like did you have any sense of where this was going to go i didn't i didn't uh to be honest i you know i was excited to be on board with the project because i loved on cinema the podcast and the web series so i knew at least of two formats that tim and greg had created up to that point but I think once we began talking about moving into n- new formats and expanding the the world a little bit, I think it felt very natural to us to explore those different avenues that these people, because it's all the content is sort of generated by characters in the world. Like, you know, every everything from Decker on cinema, the movie, the trial, all exists for real as media in the world. There's no, there's no such thing as like a, a movie of on cinema or a TV show where we're watching something that's not actually existing in the world of on cinema if that makes sense yeah you mentioned uh, various things i didn't mention the podcast and i also neglected to mention the new book as well i mean everything is almost covered now well we're, we still have a couple formats uh, <laughs> left we don't have a, we explore. don't have a, a, a cassette tape yet right Okay. We're working on that. That makes sense. Okay. Well, uh, Greg, for those who uh, aren't familiar with uh, this film yet, uh, as we're speaking, it's not in wide release. Can you talk about um, Mr. America, where this sort of came from, maybe the, the, the plot generally? Can you summarize what's going on in this film? Well, if you saw the, the trial, Tim had made a, a bad decision to uh, give away vape pen samples at an electronic music festival that that he was uh running uh leading to the death of of 20 young people as well as a hospitalization of it was like 160 others mm-hmm. and so um you know we we had a we had the murder trial um and uh 
which was aired on Adult Swim's website and looked pretty much like a court TV type five camera, uh, stagnant cameras uh, shooting, but you know, a mm-hmm. straight, a straight documentation of this trial. And that being so different than anything that we'd done in the on cinema universe, it, it, it seemed like it was um, like a sequel was necessary and a sequel in a completely different format. And so, uh, you know, we kicked around this idea of, of documenting Tim um, getting revenge on the district attorney who dared to prosecute him for murdering 20 kids uh, by running running for district attorney and, and <laughs> taking the guy's job, you know. <laughs> sorry. Is, uh, it's, it's, I can't help but it's just very funny and very dark. And I, I sorry to interrupt you with my laughter. It was visceral. It was involuntary. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Always laugh. Um, so, yeah, you know, he, he's, he's pissed off. How dare this guy? And decides that he's going to take the guy's job by running for district attorney. And it seemed like um, to us a good way to uh, to do this would be through a, a, a documentary made by uh, a second string or student filmmaker who, uh, you know, heard about this guy running and then ended up stumbling on a much bigger story. Uh, as he got involved in this world and and like Eric said, you know, I think we were asked to do something that would be uh, some web content, you know Half an hour was the number that was thrown around. I kind of always felt like that's not going to be enough um, When we started shooting I was kind of making Kind of a mental count count of what was going on and just thinking this is like This is really gonna be long <laughs> because we, we weren't we weren't wasting any any footage you know like we would film something it was always pretty crucial and always pretty entertaining and it just started to uh feel like a much bigger thing than than (laughs) than we were given the money to make you know yeah on cinema is a collaborative enterprise um i'm curious greg if you can talk about your role in this film both uh i suppose as real life greg and in terms of greg in the film because you have tim Heidecker as an interloper in the p- political sphere, I kind of thought you came across as an interloper in the film. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> the filmmakers are like, ah, here's Greg again, I guess. Like, I don't know what, what's going on there exactly. Well, I think, you know, my character in, in, in the film is, I mean, Tim doesn't have a lot of friends, that character. You know? <laughs> no, he it, doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. Doesn't have a lot of friends. And the ones that he does have are likely on some sort of payroll, mm-hmm. uh, as in the case of the musicians that he works with. Um, and I think that uh, I don't have much of a life outside of watching movies and getting as close to Tim as I can, because he's the one that controls the uh, the airing of On Cinema, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the There's only thing Greg really cares about is On Cinema, really. Well, I, or reviewing movies. If somebody yeah. offered me another movie review show i think i'd be out of there you know oh. but no one's gonna no one's gonna do that no one no one wants my expertise because it's questionable as to whether or not that actually is expertise is this a so, public, is this know, a public outcry for work for your character greg <laughs> uh well <laughs> i don't know i i don't have zip, but, um, zip recruiter as a sponsor for this podcast yet but maybe i'm getting there now that's amazing <laughs> you just hire me i, I think if I, I think if i really wanted to if 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 I really wanted that character to review more movies, I could probably find a, a crummy place to do it. But uh, uh, Eric, but, uh, uh, yeah, so what, 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 well, did I answer the question? You did. I don't know. No, you did. You did. Okay. You, you you summarized it and you explained the dynamic. But I I just wanted to. What's my rating? How many bags of popcorn do you get my answer for the explanation? Well, obviously it would be five bags of popcorn. There's nothing. Right. There's nothing. There's no reason to give it anything less, right? That's the way it works. Now, mm-hmm. now, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, two microphones. How about that? I'll throw in a couple of microphones. Why not? Uh, Eric, Love it. Eric, can you, from your perspective, explain how you view the Greg and Tim dynamic in the on cinema universe? I've had them both on the show. It got ugly, and then uh, you know I've talked to Greg about it too. He just sort of explained it a little bit in terms of Tim not really having friends. Uh, his character of Greg glomming on to Tim because of the power he has. But from your perspective, what do you make of their dynamic? How would you explain it? I think we've we've talked about it in the past as a sort of on cinema, the review show being like an exercise in like the failure of compromise and having to watch these two people try to make something together and they can't get on the same page about it. And I think that's certainly <laughs> at the core of why they don't get along so much is that they're such different people 
and they are somehow uh, tied to one another in, in in a way that they both make this show. They both enjoy making the show for much different reasons. And I think in the world of as the world has grown and there's become more projects like Decker or Mr. America, it seems like Tim is is much uh, he can command a spotlight much easier than Greg. And to me, I feel like Greg's character sort of likes that attention and likes being in the limelight that, that Tim generates, uh, but at the same time wants nothing to do with Tim on any other level other than the fact that uh, there's always seems to be a project or a camera pointed to him and Greg can kind of sneak <laughs> into the shot. And I think Mr. America is sort of like almost the ultimate expression of that and that this is a documentary about Tim's run for DA, and it has nothing to do with Greg, really, but he finds a way to insert himself <laughs> yeah. uh, by becoming this tipster about Tim's behavior and then ultimately trying to hijack the documentary uh, to make it about his own pet interests. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and yet, and yet any time that I have been given the, the, the spotlight and given uh, you know, the chance to, to host an episode of On Cinema, I've always completely botched it and, and just proven... <laughs> proven that only tim should be steering the ship it's it's interesting that in the film uh you are just fixated on an old vhs uh film movie that it may correlate to the present day situation and i just found that amusing like no matter what is going on in tim's life you are fixated on spreading the good word about movies that you think uh, might be interesting to other people greg that is (laughs) that is dedication to your craft if i might say well, I mean, I think that there's more similarities in these characters than than people realize. And, you know, just as Tim is, is prone to uh, conspiracy theories and things like that, here in, in this movie, I've somehow decided that, that real life, him running for DA is somehow a, a remake of a movie called <laughs> The Shaggy DA. Yes. I mean, that's, that's not... That's life not is a, imitating art. Yeah, for you. <laughs> Yes, your prism, yeah. your reality prism is all through cinema. It's all through a camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, I mean, well, Eric, I, I wonder in your, I appreciated your sort of um, explanation of their dynamic. What what can be compelling and confusing for fans and viewers of these two characters is that there are often glimmers of virtue within them. Like, you, I kind of want to like one of them more. Greg, oh really? I, I want to kind. <laughs> I vague, <laughs> interesting that you feel that way. I want to. I really want to. Like I, ha- I watch so much of them that, like anything, you develop a. a you know, we're in the uh, whole anti-hero phase. We have been for, um, uh, probably a couple of centuries, frankly. Now that I think about it, but there's something about them that I want to appreciate and appeal. You know, find appealing. But it's getting. It, then, like within a second, they'll say something else that I'll be like, nope, nope, can't, no, that's not right. <laughs> I can't figure out, do you know what I, like, if you were to say that one was more virtuous or more of a hero figure than the other, Eric, who would you, who would you pick? Well, uh, you know, I would say that w- the, one of the fun things about this world is that a lot of the people that view these shows end up sort of taking sides. Uh, dur- in, you know, and this kind of uh, takes place in the comment sections and the, and the fan groups. You know, people either decide if they're a Tim head or a Greg head, because I do think that there are uh, appeals to each character in, in, in sort of an anti-hero kind of way. I would say, you know, you know, without taking sides, I would say that Greg certainly has done less overt, uh, overtly villainous behavior and, uh, and certainly is like a he's, he's a more low key sort of anti-hero in that I think they're both sort of narcissistic and and uh and have trouble relating to other people and are and are definitely both obsessed with their own worlds and their own pet projects but i think tim having caused the death of 20 young people at a, <laughs> at a concert is certainly worse than greg wasting everybody's time <laughs> with his movie reviews and vhs tapes but it, but it's fascinating that we i think as a as someone who watches the thing i'm like yeah you know tim might have killed his own son somehow and all these people but Greg is a little creepy. Like Greg skulking around and hanging out with this guy is also problematic. You know what I mean? Well, and what I did to Mark too. I mean, I think yeah. the thing is, is it's fool's gold to think that Greg is 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 the good guy. It's just that I have less power and, and brute force. <laughs> you know what I mean? But time and time again, if if you look at awful behavior that that Tim is doing, I'm I'm replicating a lot of it on a much lower level yes know. yes it seems virtuous even <laughs> that you want to stick to the plan of reviewing movies that's the point this was supposed it, to be the point 
Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you're truly tuning in to get movie criticism, then you would definitely look at me as the hero because yeah. <laughs> I am trying to keep it focused on that. But if you are truly tuning into that show for movie criticism, then you also have a screw loose. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now, there's something that I want to ask you both about because I kind of viewed the onset of On Cinema as um, a satire or critique of what let's call it Hollywood politics, uh, pop culture politics. And as the show has gone on, and I mean music, comedy, like there's all sorts of things that are kind of mocked and uh, you know, scrutinized, I would say. But as the show has gone on, and particularly with Decker as well, and then this film, it has gotten into politics politics, I would argue. Can you explain well, the transition between... Like, obviously, you're seeing those yeah. worlds as having parallels, but Greg, what's going on there? I mean, that's that's just the case of why I think it's good not to sit down and, and write something completely before you launch into it, you know? Mm. There's definitely some ideas that we were trying to put out there early on but you know you do something for a few years and and depending on what's going on in your life and what's going on in the world it can uh change course and and deal with other things that are going on at that time and mm -hmm. at that moment and definitely you know if you look at the very beginning of the whole thing we weren't planning a lot of the things that happened later on you know it, it just comes down to uh you know we're, we're we're doing what we want at at that given moment and um if you're interested in politics, as as we all are, why not? You know, yeah. why not steer? Why not steer your interests and your concerns into the art that you're making at a particular moment? I would also add to that, and I, I was not uh, not around for the creation of the podcast, so Greg could probably uh, shed more light on the origins of the very first piece of the on cinema world. But from my perspective, like it seems like the theme in that podcast is sort of like it's a it's about ego, and sort of like the idea that my opinion on this movie should be heard by all these, all these people, even though I know nothing about it mm. and sort of ego and hubris. And I feel like that uh, exploration has continued and certainly just expanded as Tim and Greg's interests and experiences expand. We just see more situations where their ego and hubris can take control with these disastrous results as they try to create vanity movies, uh, vanity TV show, vanity band running for DA with no hope. Uh, it's just sort of exploring the idea that people that uh, are trying to uh, do things that they really shouldn't <laughs> have no business <laughs> doing. So, yeah, I think that uh, I think originally, you know, we were listening, uh, we were listening to some sort of garbage podcasts that Tim and I would trade mm -hmm. links to, like take a listen to this. this these guys have nothing to say, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like not. It, it's not even that they're they're uninformed opinions it's like people that literally are just excited to have a microphone in front of them and then feel that this is is something that needs to be put out there in the world even though there's no audience you know and the, and the self-satisfaction that some of those people have like here we are on episode 19 of this podcast which literally has no no listeners and y you listen to the tone and the person's voice and they seem as satisfied as jimmy fallon uh you know, on, on national TV. Right. And you just like wonder where is this confidence, this misplaced confidence and delusion coming from. And it was kind of fun to uh, replicate that vibe that, that we found so amusing on a very small scale since the podcast really started out as something to do in between takes uh, of scenes on the movie, the comedy, which we were shooting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just something to do to kill time rather than being on your phone, looking at the news. Well, and as the thing has developed and, and, you know, just exploded into all these other realms, uh, I feel like I remember Tim, I think maybe before uh, even the election results, Tim had told me in a conversation that Decker was basically modeled after Donald Trump. Like, I don't even think Trump was when we spoke anyway, was des you know, he didn't seem to have a shot at what occurred. And so. And just taking into account what you've just said, I threw out the term politics, and I meant social politics, whatever you want to call them, sociocultural politics. Right. But this, this, all, the on cinema universe really is a meditation on power and self awareness and the lack of it. Is that fair? I, and and I'm I'm it's a meditation on a million things. I mean, definitely yeah. that stuff. I think failure is is something that's fascinating to to all of us. Mm. Um, and then you know you just get. 
little tangents like quackery in in medicine. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, and, yeah. False expertise or, or the single mindedness of of collectors who are more interested in the object than in the art. You know. Yeah. Or or just the concept that you can have a movie that somebody spends, you know, a whole whole team of hundreds of people spend months and months and months working on. There's all this effort, money, all these sorts of things. And then it just ends up another piece of plastic in a gigantic pile of yeah. similar things, completely forgotten, just a complete waste, really. You yeah. know? Yeah. Eric, do you want to comment on, on my line of questioning? I think that's a, I think that's spot on about the tone of this and, and sort of the things we're exploring. I think that we naturally gravitate to the subjects that interest us or things that either bother us or excite us. You know, there's, I feel like there's a lot of these characters that we recognize either in ourselves or in other people that make us think. And, and I'm certainly so interested in failure and like my own fear of failure and my own fear <laughs> of like going out there and making something that doesn't work or trying something that's not going to work. And so I'm always interested in, in the people that are bold enough to do that with the uncertainty of whether or not it's going to work. Uh, Cause I, I sort of respect that in a weird way and also yeah. am fascinated by the results of it. So making something like Decker was so much fun because it was great to, to make something knowing, you know, getting in the mind of somebody that has all this ambition and all these ideas that are not necessarily good ideas and doesn't necessarily have the wherewithal to execute it properly. Yeah. And to sort of see where that ends up is, is so yeah, interesting they, to me. It's kind of a freedom to fail for us personally. Like we can I, actually make mistakes ourselves without the fear of, uh, of it coming across <laughs> well, as there a real is mistake. That, that, that bulletproof aspect to it. But I mean, it, it, it's just interesting to explore the idea of these people that are, are not good at something what if they were actually given the opportunity to do something doesn't really happen you know you don't really see what happens when these in-app podcasters are given a network tv show right you know, and, the, get, you and, and, and the examples you every once in a while you, you do see examples from time to time and they're all very fun like uh, the room and other right. other things like that are, are very inspirational and fascinating to us. Right, right. With each new on cinema venture, I feel like we learn something more about Tim and Greg. Um, in the film, in particular with Tim, you know, he has this very odd dynamic with his campaign manager. Uh, the narcissism and ineptitude and rudeness is elevated and escalated to a point where you know when he's just just ex making having exchanges with normal people it's just very strange uh, eric was there <laughs> <laughs> is there anything in particular you think that um tim heads or greg heads are going to learn about these characters in this uh, within the the universe of mr america well without giving away any spoilers i do think that there are some there are some interesting places where tim's character goes as far as his relationship with like the community of San Bernardino, which was kind of touched on in, in the trial as far as, you know, this being a big public spectacle and him being becoming the sort of infamous murderer that got away with it. So I think there's some kind of fun stuff where he interacts with the real world of San Bernardino and we get to see how the community kind of thinks about him. Greg, do you have any thoughts on that question? Well, I, I do think that you're, you're getting some different insight into these guys simply because this is the first time that somebody else is controlling the editorial tone of how they're being presented. I mean, the trial was just raw footage from a, a courtroom and all the on cinema stuff, you know, presumably these characters had some con or Tim had some control over it, but this is an, a, a fictitious outside filmmaker who's choosing what he wants you to see about Tim. Yeah. And it's definitely stuff that Tim would not choose to reveal. So you, you, you are getting some, some kind of ugly moments that I mean, there's always ugly moments with Tim or with Greg, but uh, you're getting some stuff that even even these guys wouldn't have ever let out of the bag. I will say, and again, I'm also trying to avoid spoilers here. I hope I haven't uh, infringed upon anything here by talking about the film, but I will say that one of the most powerful scenes, the one that stays with me, is one of Greg showing up to talk to the filmmakers and then being like, uh, "We got to go." And there's this shot, there's this shot of Greg sitting on a bench. And I just find that chilling. Like I found it literally, I was like, whoa, like that more than almost anything else in the film. Just the weird sort of behind profile of Greg. I was like, holy Lord, like I can't, 
Man, my, I think my wife left the room. My wife left the room. She's like, no, can't. There's something, something off here. I can't do it. You know what I mean? So there's just like very it's subtle really filmmaking. <laughs> Erica, really I, 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 <laughs> is there anything about the um, mockumentary realm that you are in, in, in a way mocking? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, I think uh, less so mocking the mockumentary realm and more so, you know, we... I, we all like mockumentaries. I think I don't know if I want to speak for Greg on this, but you know, like we love Spinal Tap. We love you know the greats in the, in that field. And, and Eric, I of think, course, is involved on in many of the greats in that field directly as a as a writer and editor, right. etc. Yeah, and I, I think well, that's very nice of you to say. I think that we were very aware of that of that format being you know not necessarily well worn, but there's certainly a lot of great stuff in that field, and also some not so great stuff and i think we <laughs> we were basically trying to strive for a, a high level of authenticity where i think since the creation of that uh format um whether it's i don't know if it's like uh woody allen made one a long time ago and then spinal tap and since then the the field has sort of almost evolved into just like snap zooms into people and reactions and there's sort of like yeah, a, yeah. a a lazy trope that sort of has evolved as far as you know, like where it starts with like the off the British office was a was very very like careful about making it feel like a documentary, and the American office kind of continued that maybe loosened up the reins a little bit to to allow Definitely. it to continue for as long as it did. Yeah. And then you have something like Modern Family now, where it's it's the documentary format, but there's it's not really clear why why there's a documentary being made here, and it's sort of just like the format for the format's sake. So we tried to be very careful about you know making sure that there was a, a filmmaker behind this who we understood what this is what his motivations were, uh, why this is being made, what kind of cameras it's being shot on, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and also making sure it doesn't come across as just like a, a sitcom or like a setup like uh, that's just shot in a documentary style. So we, we tried not to block out the shots too carefully. We wanted to make sure that the camera operators could find these moments and not necessarily predict where things are going to go because I feel like you can see that when where the cameras know what's going to happen and can snap zoom in on it or or understand what's going to happen next and everything feels too perfect. So yeah. we certainly were aware of that and tried to work against the tropes a little bit. And because of the, and also, you know, because of the fact that we had very, very, very little money and time to make this, a lot of it was being prepared going in and, and Eric and, and Tim and I have worked together on this world so much that, that we kind of know exactly what needs to be done mm -hmm. in any given moment or any given scene. And then so everything can be done really fast without, um, I, I don't know, it's, it's all like intuitive, you know. Well, speaking of which, how much of this was somewhat improvised? All of it. Literally, yeah. <laughs> I would say all of it. We wrote we wrote a script. So we, we started with an outline. We wrote an actual script where all the lines were written out just more for production's sake and for the other actors who are not Tim and Greg to understand what each scene is about mm -hmm. and what sort of a, a prototype of what they could say in that moment would be. Uh, but we didn't have, nobody memorized anything and so, and we threw it all away and basically used it as a template for what these characters are thinking and feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. And Tim and Greg don't even, probably didn't even need to look at that before the scene because they, you know, they <laughs> no. wrote the thing. So they, they, they yeah, internalize the these characters so well. Yeah. And they also know the, the, the plot outline so well, the story. So essentially, I would say 100% improvised. The trial had some things that were scripted word for word, like the opening statements and some of the procedural stuff we yeah. wrote out for them. Yeah. yeah. But that was also mostly improvised as well. Uh, but there were, like with the trial, you know, I remember writing a, a like a sample script to give to one of the characters. Just like, this is what could happen on the day, but but don't memorize this. We just want you to sort of answer as this character might. And some of the actors did that, and other actors literally read, had memorized the script, which wasn't really supposed to be a script. It was just kind of a, you know, mm -hmm. a guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, I, 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 I appreciate the insight into this film. Uh, I, I enjoyed it more than my wife did. Um, she had to leave. <laughs> and uh, She had to leave. She had to, well, she came back, but she's like, I don't know. This is intense. I, I think, you know, I think anyone outside of this world doesn't really... It, it takes a lot to, you must admit, like we, you are asking people to invest in these people and this world in a way that is unusual. There's a lot going on. I, it could I, be a big time commitment. I like that. I like that it was intensity that drove somebody out, though. That's, that's not a bad thing for, you know, 
a humorous <laughs> mockumentary. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've talked about, uh, Greg, some of your motivations, your and Tim and Eric's motivations in in sort of reflecting whatever's interesting you on the show. What do you suppose, and I'll, we'll start with Eric, what do you suppose Mr. America is saying about contemporary politics, if anything? Um, this is among the more overt, this is, I think, the most overtly political, like, meaning a guy running for office <laughs> type uh, ventures for this universe. Um, what do you suppose it's saying, if anything, about politics these days? To me, personally, what I get out of it is that there's sort of this new era of politics that sort of embraces even the ugliest opinions as legitimate. So this idea that like everyone is entitled to, to having a platform for their opinion. And maybe this is driven by social media or the current political climate. Yeah. But just this idea that, that no matter how ugly or how uninformed uh, your opinion is, it's still valid in some way. And we should, we should uh, promote it or <laughs> celebrate it or respect it even uh, when I, I feel the opposite is true. Right. That's, that's my thought. Greg? You know, you've interviewed me before. I don't, I don't ever like to give these kind of – I mean, I kind of feel like people have got to watch it and take what they want out of it. I think that what Eric just said is true, and I think there's a dozen other meanings that are, that are there for you it, it, if you're looking and if you're interested, you know? Yeah. Okay. But I don't, I, I feel like the best way to, the best way to express what the meaning of this stuff is, is by making the stuff. And it, to me, it seems like it's right there in front of you. So yeah. I don't want to be the one to say that. I'll leave that up to somebody else. Okay. That's fair enough. So what is next? If, uh, have you figured out what's next for uh, the On Cinema universe? What's coming up? Or for, uh, well, we've got a season going on right now. Yes. It's the season 11. And that is just plugging along, okay? And and we don't know where that's going to go quite yet. In in terms of we do, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. And again, best way to figure that out is to watch it. I assume. Yeah, yeah I assume. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah, highly recommended. <laughs> Eric, are you doing other things? By the way, uh, last time Greg and I talked, we were talking about his uh, excellent uh, uh, Neil Hamburger album, uh, "Still Dwelling." Uh, do you have? Uh, and by the way, Greg, if you want to talk about anything else you're up to, feel free. But Eric, do you have other things on the go that uh, you want to talk about? I have a couple things that I've been working on, but I can't talk about them, unfortunately. But there's more stuff to come. There's some You'll TV, find out. TV projects to come. Okay, okay. And and Greg, anything? Uh, tour dates or anything like that? Uh, yeah, but if I give tour dates when people listen to this, they'll all be over. Oh. So that's futility. Okay. But when, I, is this I, when is this coming out? In a year? It's. <laughs> <laughs> we got a tour. We got a show this Sunday in Vancouver. Oh, yeah, it won't but be up. It's, it's done now. Anyone listening to this, you you have to get a time machine. Yeah, okay. Um, but I did want I did want to say, though, one thing about this movie that I think is kind of interesting is that if we had been given the task of making an on-cinema movie, it would have come out very different than this, where we were making something that was kind of just a, a web, some web content, and it ended up inadvertently being the movie. And I think that worked uh, in its favor, big time, right? Um, because we weren't like trying to cram in answers to a lot of questions and make sure every character was covered and and try to make this giant thing that was you know the on cinema movie. This is more like a on cinema movie that is sort of a slice uh, in time of of what Tim was up to at that particular moment. Yeah, it's rather self-contained in that sense. Totally. Like you, you the the film itself provides the all the background you might really need uh, via some yeah that's it it is accessible I don't mean to say it's not accessible I hope I didn't say that my wife storming out of the room she didn't storm out of the room she just quietly it's like <laughs> she I, just stomped I, she just quietly walked out and it's like I don't know what's happening and this this is intense anyway it's great <laughs> fantastic achievement congratulations uh, where can people go to to Learn more about Mister America. I assume, and it's it's got a it's got a wide release, does it not? It does. Yeah, MisterAmericaFilm dot com has show times and clips and background on the whole thing. And uh, October 9th, the film opens in one of these one night only sort of situations. In I think it's something like a hundred cities, oh, Canada nice. and the U.S. That's amazing. Well, I, I, you must be very proud. That's an that's an achievement in itself. You made a real film that's going to be in real theaters. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're, we're, we uh, did the same thing that the people that made Garfield the movie did, 
and the Smurfs movie and all those <laughs> other folks. So <laughs> it's nice to be finally in their company. <laughs> well, you've been there before. Let's not. Uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate this that this is happening and. Uh, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to? Uh, where can people learn more about you guys if they want to follow you on the things? Uh, do you want to talk about that? Not, not Wikipedia. That's for sure. Right. That's wrong. Okay. You're on. You're very busy on, on Twitter, right, Greg? Uh, well, on my, my Twitter, my uh, the Greg Turkington Twitter account is strictly from the point of view of the on cinema character. So you sure won't learn very much about me from that. <laughs> <laughs> but you will, in the context of this conversation, you will learn a lot. About You'll that. learn everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can learn a lot about movies. Yes, <laughs> yes, ex- exactly. And eventually, daily popcorn classic. <laughs> There's a daily popcorn classic every day. And you're often undercut by Tim as well, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I'd say more than often. Yeah, more consistently. Than, <laughs> yes, exactly. Eric, what about you? Uh, if if people were to follow you somehow, what, what would you send them to? Well, it's certainly not as entertaining as uh, Tim or Greg's Twitters, but you can follow <laughs> me at, at Eric Tarnacola on Twitter. Okay. And it's mostly uh, retweets from the Mr. America promotional account. Great. So you can enjoy those and uh, <laughs> <laughs> catch, catch up with the latest screenings and uh, self-promotion that I provide on that account. Excellent. Okay. Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate this time, and uh, congratulations again on Mr. America. I hope we speak again soon, and, and best of luck with everything going forward. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for uh, helping us out with some kind words here. Yeah, this is fun. Well, deep gratitude and, and, and thanks, of course, to Greg Turkington and Eric Natarnicola for being on this, the 501st episode of Creative Control, which is part of the E1 Podcast Network and is available on all iOS and Android platforms and almost on everything else that you can think of. Spotify, YouTube, Audio Boom, all sorts of different things. If you can't find an episode that you've heard about and are looking for on any of those things, or if you wish to learn more about me, and sign up for my semi-regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow the show on Twitter at Vish Creative, or follow me directly at vishkana. You can also listen to a radio show version of Creative Control every Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world at cfru.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also, please visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. If you haven't heard, I recently added a $6 tier for exclusive content. So if you'd like to hear uh, archive interviews, who knows, perhaps someday I'll dig into the archives and uh, play you an old Neil Hamburger interview that I might have conducted on my old CFRU show. Why not? It was always fun when I got to t- chat with Neil, um, and so perhaps that'll be something that I that I put out there on the exclusives. It's just whatever I can find, whatever I have uh, from my past. So again, uh, if that intrigues you, please become a six dollar patron uh, for this show at patreon.com slash creative control, and you get the regular podcast and lots of uh, exclusives as well. Thanks again to Pizza Trocadero, the Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts for their in kind support for this show. Thanks as always to my uh, old friend Jim Guthrie whom you can learn about at jimguthrie.org, a fantastic musician who provides some music for this show. And finally thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you will listen to others if you haven't already and uh, subscribe to the podcast to keep uh, tabs on what's going on. And that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. I will talk to you very soon. Thanks again. Bye for now.